Good morning to all uh, and uh, welcome to our uh, special session on uh, women and space. Uh, we will uh, introduce uh, the activity that we perform uh, within uh, the, um, and the mission and vision of uh, the women in aerospace uh, Europe, including also uh, our uh, Rome local group. And uh, later on, we have uh, um, a set of uh, speakers with uh, which we discuss uh, about uh, their experience and the way forward. Thank you very much. And I will uh, the floor to um, Cristina Valente in order to start with our presentation. Okay, thank you, Anna Maria, and thank you to all, and uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, Alicia, next, please. I just started to introduce uh, uh, the leaders of the Rome local group, Anna Maria Nassisi and myself, Cristina Valente, and uh, Alicia Pellegrino, she is uh, the secretary of the committee and also the coordinator of the research uh, group. Next, please. Okay, women in aerospace, is a, a non-profit organization a committed to, to promoting female talent and leadership across all levels of the European aerospace sector. So we recognize that there are still considerable challenges that need to, to be addressed. For example, in the all of the STEM fields, engineering seems to be especially hard hit by the gender group gap, and this gets even worse in the aerospace sector. Um, and so We Are Europe is uh, uh, intended to be a platform for the aerospace profession to help the aerospace professionals to promote diversity and excellence, and also to attract younger generations to work in the aerospace sector. Uh, Alicia, next, please. Uh, we are Europe is a part of the global network, first established is in the US in 1985. We are Europe was founded by Simonetta Di Pippo and Claudia Kessler in 2009, with only 30 individual members. Um, but now uh, we can see that in the sub subsequent years, uh, we have um, enlarged the presence also in Canada, Mexico, and in Costa Rica. Next, please. So we now, this is the picture in uh, up today in 2021. And we increase a lot. So we to today approximately we are 1,000 individual members, 32 corporate members, 10 international partners, and we have um, 16 local groups. What is important that uh, we are an European platform that operates on different dimensions. So through partnership with the industry, academia, university, and other uh, associations in the aerospace segment. Um, next, please. So uh, now we uh, can we have uh, 16 local groups in the and what is important to underline that they are established in the major European cities uh, with an active uh, aerospace industry. Our local group are really strong, even grow, growing, and uh, diverse units that meet regularly for networking events, for trainings, and for lectures, and also for events that include for example, professional training and the workshop with qualified trainers and the, and the coach. We organize also company visit and also simply chatting over drinks and dinner. 
the other point is that our local group are free to organize a program that match the, uh, the ex expectation of the local We Are Europe community. Next, please. Okay, this picture is uh, uh, about our corporate members and the partners. And as you can see, that include the major players in the space sector. Uh, we are Europe has again a high level support from its uh, corporate members, fully devoted to the We Are Europe goals to expand women opportunities in the aerospace sector. So we are supported by big and small organizations, and we offer a different level of sponsorship. The difference between corporate members and the partners is that uh, the corporate members represent the, the financial backbone of the association. The partners is more at the strategic level, so we establish a mutual support and, uh, and the benefit. Next, please. <laughs> so, um, We Are Europe uh, has built up an extensive program with a variety of initiatives meant to support our individual and corporate members. So, uh, the address is to foster growth, to support talent, to encourage change. Uh, this happened through uh, award, uh, for example, We are two types of award for the senior ladies, outstanding achievement, and also for the student and the young professional. Also, we have the grant that is where we found the young talent to attend industry workshops and the conferences. We have networking, mentoring, we have training, also through career building courses such as networking skills and the professional development. And also we organize the panel discussion on a variety of industry topics. Next, please. Okay, this chart is just to give you our media and the social information in the, in the case do you intended to, uh, to learn more about our uh, uh, association. Next, please. Okay, now I introduce uh, the We Are Europe from local group that was founded in uh, 2013. No, no, it's okay. Thank you, Alicia. <laughs> the next is uh, okay. Okay, what is uh, the first message that uh, I, uh, I think that is uh, important to, to, to give uh, in this session? That uh, we have a really nice revamping of the group uh, that is started in 2017 when we created the committee. In this case, uh, we increase a lot uh, our presence not only at uh, local at or regional level, but we increase uh, a lot uh, all over Italy. Um, because uh, now we, our member, are located in the many Italian region, in the north, like Piemonte, Lombardia, in the center, like uh, Abruzzo, or in the south, like uh, Puglia, Basilicata, uh, Sicilia and so on. That's why we can say now that uh, we uh, cover uh, at the national level uh, our presence uh, as a uh, room local group. Next, please. I would like to introduce our committee. Why? Because uh, uh, our strength is, uh, first of all, that we have uh, um, uh, that. Uh, Uh, the previous one. Yeah. Yes. First of all, because we choose the teaming approach. This is really important that we work together. And what is important is also because we have two elements that give a, a, a very nice boost to the committee. First of all, because 
uh, we uh, have uh, um, created an integration of a different generation. And also we have a multidisciplinary approach. That's uh, uh, allow that our member are uh, engineers, lawyers, physics, mathematics, lawyers. And uh, this is uh, one of the uh, good issues uh, that we did. And uh, in this case, uh, we, we see that we make a greater and uh, uh, we have a, a very, uh, this kind of a mixture give us a, a, a very um, a great chance uh, to uh, enlarge our presence and also our activities. What is important that uh, um, the seniors and especially in particular the leaders, Anna Maria and I, we can transfer our experience, knowledge, we can address. But the other side, we uh, receive a lot from them. That uh, we are convinced with the fact that is a good choice. That's, uh, and so I am really happy to have this committee and to have this kind of the enrichment relationship. So uh, now, uh, thank you. And uh, I leave the floor to Anna Maria that will introduce the program of uh, the local group and to Alicia that will present the research activity made by the uh, Anna Maria. Uh, Anna Maria, you are mute. Good morning. Just to, to give you welcome because we have some delay in the connection. I'm very happy, we are very happy because this is the first time in the IT uh, conference that uh, you have a, a so important women participation. So we are very happy for that. For that thank also, <laughs> <laughs> so you can continue, please. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Anna Maria. Okay, okay, I was waiting okay. for Maria Antonita. <laughs> okay, okay, don't worry, don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll we start very fast because we have a full time uh, with the activity that we perform within the local group of Rome that uh, are including a seminar, workshop, a training. Uh, that uh, The training is also day by day with uh, our young generation. Uh, awareness of the female role model. Uh, that is very important to inspire the new generation uh, for uh, we, uh, the same activity. Uh, gender equality research that will be introduced by Alice, inspirational campaign devoted to equity, diversity, and uh, inclusion that is uh, very important in order to increase the awareness. Educational activity uh, mainly for the young generation, but not only. Uh, network mentoring for our um, coming from our expert, but also inviting external guests, increase the visibility of our members. Next one. This is only an example of the thematic webinar that we uh, perform during uh, the, the COVID because uh, during the COVID uh, we have not the possibility to perform uh, in presence uh, conference and we replaced with uh, the webinar on different uh, topic. Uh, one typology was uh, focused on gender equality and other on um, by uh, inviting external guests coming from national, European, international context uh, to speak about uh, on uh, some thematic uh, uh, matter of the space. Next one, Alicia. 
And uh, um, before COVID, uh, I show you that we have uh, also performed a um, workshop uh, together with uh, the Roma Business School for uh, the whole day with uh, the diploma at the hand, and uh, that you can see in the photo. And uh, there were uh, our members coming also from North Italy, uh, waking up uh, very early in the morning. But the satisfaction of all of the, our members was very high. Next one. Uh, the, there was also an educational activity that was started from Aloisa Russo. Um, with uh, that uh, was awarded uh, uh, in 2019 uh, as a young professional uh, with uh, his project uh, starting from uh, the school in the south of Italy in Puglia and um, later on she uh, disseminate uh, this uh, format by using uh, uh, the digital platform and by involving uh, uh, different schools disseminated on uh, the whole national territory. This initiative was a big winner because uh, uh, a young uh, women speak to young generation and they use the same uh, um, approach and the language that is different because they was more open for question and to interact with the, the teacher. Next one. Uh, we have done also some campaign for inspirational women in STEM, starting, uh, of course, from our founders, that is Simonetta De Chipico and uh, Claudia Kessler, but highlighting uh, a lot of uh, other um, leaders in this sector that you can uh, find by going on, all, on our uh, Instagram social media. Next one. Uh, other uh, uh, inspirational um, uh, initiative is uh, devoted to the, to the From uh, STEM to Stars webinar, uh, where we have uh, invited the selected women in order to transfer their experience and uh, to provide the right message to the young generation, because it's very important to propose uh, and to create the way awareness for a female role model in terms of complementarity and not in terms of to against uh, to other uh, gender. And uh, we introduce uh, the last uh, guest was a man, because uh, we are um, convinced that uh, it's important uh, to have a open dialogue. Uh, and uh, this is uh, easier with uh, the younger generation. And uh, we have a campaign women in our space. Uh, the next one. Uh, you can find uh, this uh, campaign on Instagram, next one. And uh, we have uh, also promoted the initiative for visibility of our members uh, on our Instagram, next one. And uh, it's very important our networking because uh, in this period we have not the opportunity to meet in presence, but it's very important to uh, have an open dialogue uh, among the different generation. And uh, you can see from these uh, photos. Go on. Next one. Uh, this is relevant to the participation of the initiative. Next one. Okay, I leave the floor to Alice. We are in delay, but we will go very fast. Thank you, Alice. Alice? I'm sorry, I was talking, but it was still muted. 
So thank you very much, Ana Maria, for introducing me. Um, I am um, the secretary of the committee of uh, We Are Europe Rome Vocal Group. And since 2017, uh, we started with uh, a, gender, a gender equality research activity uh, with other uh, members of our association in Italy. And together we decided that we wanted to understand more about what was going on uh, within the STEM fields and within the aerospace sector, especially in Italy. And so to this purpose, we decided to carry on the research study. At first, we started with the study case that was comparing the STEM sector in, in a, with a particular focus on Italy. And we presented the outcome of our uh, research and study in 2018 at the IEC in Bremen with uh, a dedicated paper in which we have explained what we found and that indeed the situation was presenting a variety of different gender inequality issues characterizing our, our sector, depending on, of course, the context. So we focus mainly on the, the industry one, the agencies and uh, the academia. After that, we started cooperating with the uh, international level, especially with the uh, association called UNICEF Global, that it's uh, a consortium of different universities that gave us access to a lot of different perspectives and opinion. And in particular, we uh, carried on and we, we met um, the Women in Aerospace Japanese Association, Sarajo. And we started with them a, um, a dedicated cooperation in which that, had, that allowed us to organize different events. Uh, one uh, uh, during the sixth UNISA Global Meeting in 2018, another one at the end of 2019 in Japan with the cooperation of both UNISA Global and Sarajo. And uh, after that, we decided to organize also an online uh, uh, panel discussion in Italy um, with, uh, with the support of our association. And the outcome of all this work was then uh, used to prepare a dedicated survey that was shared between 2020 and 2021 in Italy uh, and in Japan in order to then uh, characterize and understand better which was the person perspective of individuals that were working in our in our sector in different aspects. So also not only working, but also studying. So different le levels and within generations in order then to perform a cross-cultural cross -cultural analysis that would have given us the, a focus and uh, more insights on the different perspectives that we could get and um, the person perception, especially on gender inequality within, uh, within our fields. And this helped us in uh, then uh, carried on another, um, another dedicated uh, paper that we presented at IAC 2020. And after that, we decided to improve uh, our research to collect more data within Japan. So we cooperated again with Sarajo, we translated our work, the survey that we shared uh, in Japanese. And uh, after that, we had the chance also to uh, characterize better the main results and to discriminate between the two different aspects in Italy and Japan. And tomorrow we're going to uh, present those results at the GHE 2021 conference on uh, higher education on our, our space higher education systems, especially uh, have main outcome for this year of our work. So uh, here uh, you have an overview of uh, all the current members of the gender equality research group, especially the ones that have participated from the Women in Aerospace Europe Loam Local Group to this uh, last uh, activity that will be presented tomorrow. And uh, Naoko Yamazaki, former JAXA representative, and Tomoi Yomimura, that uh, are the two contributors from the Women in Aerospace Association from Japan. Um, of course, in addition to this, we decided to focus on something that could allow us also to simplify and to, to ease the, the exchange of information and the presentation of the outcome of our work. So we decided at the beginning of last year to start a dedicated uh, series of uh, short fields and videos to be shared on Instagram uh, in order then to summarize and to present in a nice and dynamic way the content of our association. So uh, with the support of uh, other um, women from our association, we, we started this Let's Talk Equity in which uh, we are indeed presenting everything that we have discovered by using uh, nice animations and uh, engaging content. And if you want to know more, all the, the main uh, 
five, the first five episodes are available as a EGTV Instagram series. In order then to uh, give space to the, to the young generation and to give them the chance uh, as we had to share their main activities within uh, the their space sector that they are um, involved in performing at university, we also are giving the chance to different students group from all over Italy to present their projects. So the one that they have performed at, at university, the one that allowed them to uh, learn so much and to also understand better which is going to be their place within the state sector Please within share. these uh, Please finalize. So we are yeah, I know. Uh, it's almost finished. Within this uh, uh, other um, EGTV series called the Briga Giovani. So, um, as uh, already mentioned by Anna Maria, all our work is uh, summarized on our social media, and uh, you can find everything also presented on the Women in Aerospace Hero website. And for anything, you can just uh, reach out to us. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Alice. And uh, now we go through the, the panel introducing uh, our speaker, that are uh, Fab Maria Fabrizia Buongiorno, uh, Earth Observation Scientist and the President of the IGEOS, uh, that is a company joint venture between uh, Telespazio and the uh, Italian Space Agency. Fabio Santoni, Professor uh, Aerospace System, uh, uh, belonging to the La Sapienza, Department of Ingegneria Aeronautica, Electrica and Energetica. Elena Tosson, PMI Professional. Uh, Federica Angeletti, Young Researcher and Field Doctor in Aerospace Engineer. Paolo Marzioli, Young Researcher and Field Doctor in Aerospace Engineer. And Eva Tai, professor, uh, is a geologist, and uh, she will say share uh, the view as a STEM. So uh, we have uh, all of the speakers that cover uh, the different discipline, uh, but um, uh, also coming from different experience and uh, uh, different generation. I have uh, the, a question for all of us before coming to the floor uh, to them uh, that is uh, according to your experience uh, which are the adding value as women what are the difficulty and could be done as a way forward action for gender equality and equity and inclusion we can start with uh, Maria Fabrizia, buongiorno. Okay. Good morning, uh, everybody. Thank you, Anna Maria, for the introduction. Uh, for, uh, to, to answer to your question, uh, first, first of all, I would like to, to, to say that uh, the, the WIA group uh, is doing a marvelous job uh, to, to support the young uh, uh, generation, women and, 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 and uh, girls and boys, I would say, uh, to, to follow, to understand how to, in, to, to get into the, uh, to in the space sector. Uh, what I can say, in my career, uh, I have always been moved by curiosity, a deep interest in understanding our processes, that's from the beginning. So I entered in, in the STEM disciplines uh, uh, since uh, the high school. Um, but uh, uh, probably I also have the chance to follow a very particular path because uh, I, after the universities, uh, I, I started the, the, the space activity, I say the space, uh, to understand the space environment during my university thesis in geology. But I was very, say, uh, the chance first to work for, for a, a company that was Telespazio and then to move to research to the National Institute that uh, where I still belong at the, the National Institute of Geophysics and Vulcanon. This gave me, I was lucky, I would say, a very, very, uh, say, wide view of, uh, of uh, the, the possible activities. And I would say that uh, we need to improve uh, uh, to support more the young, uh, the young generation because I feel that uh, 
still we need to provide uh, a more clear path uh, that they can choose uh, uh, in, to, to go in, in, the, in the space activities. And that may include, uh, uh, of course, uh, a better link uh, uh, between university courses, both in engineer or science, but, uh, but not only that, so we have to say, uh, we have under our eyes that we are living in extraordinary technological progress period. And, uh, and that means that we have to move very quick uh, and also to, to give the chance to the young generation to learn uh, and not very understand where to go. Uh, we have to help especially them uh, during the university studies, uh, at the end of the university studies, where they have to make the critical uh, decision. And uh, I would say still uh, we have to improve because uh, uh, I think the women still face uh, uh, or, or they feel that is uh, still a, a, a very uh, hard decision to uh, to go through a, a career in the STEM or in technological and say it's discipline that could be difficult or choose to, to follow to, uh, to the family uh, activities. I think this is uh, changing, but still we have uh, to, to help them. And women, of course, uh, give uh, a, very, a very nice view. Finally, I would say that uh, we, in the process that I was just uh, shortly uh, exposing, uh, we need to strengthen, of, of course, the cooperation between, say, research institutions, universities, and space industries. And uh, uh, as been said, uh, of course, uh, in Italy, they, but also uh, elsewhere, the, the space agencies have a very big very important role on that, but no, not, not only. We have to, of course, uh, use uh, the ministries of research and school education, uh, and, uh, and, I, and I, I repeat also the private world, the companies. In this case, I just, uh, I would like to, you know, my recent experience as a chairman or president of the EGEOS company, that is a, a private public cooperation, very successful, I would say in this, uh, in, in, in this case, um, uh, I will do all my, say, I will do my best uh, to support EGEOS uh, in develop activities uh, for new e-products and services that included training and, uh, uh, and in inclusion of young, uh, young generation, especially women, that, uh, of course, uh, uh, I think that for their large, uh, uh, say, or different, uh, or many, say, uh, women can see word in a different uh, in, in different ways so we are made in like that uh, since we have uh, to live uh, to give our support in the family in the company in in, in or in the research we have uh, this uh, this this uh, i think this uh, uh, this specific uh, uh, say um, qualities so I, I would like to give this uh, message to the generation, don't uh, leave your uh, say, don't leave uh, your ideas, your interests, or your curiosity. Uh, of course, uh, it's a challenge, but uh, can be fulfilled. And I think we are is doing a lot of uh, really good job on that. So uh, I, I think that uh, we are on the good path. So that's my my view. Thank you. I don't know. I, I was not too long. Uh, hopefully. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. You are perfect in time. <laughs> and uh, I will uh, leave uh, the, the floor to Fabio Santoni uh, with uh, his experience, experience as an educator. Okay. Yeah, first of all, uh, I would like to start with a, a, a quick picture of the university as a whole. I, I, of course, I, I will speak about the university um, situation. Um, the university as a whole, uh, we see a, a, a predominance of, of a female uh, in, in this field. We have like 57% women and 43% uh, men uh, in the university as a global community, so including students, faculty, and uh, administration. Um, and in general, we see 40% women, uh, sorry, 40% men and 60% women in administration and in the students. Uh, so even in the students, we have many more females than male. 
where we have um, more male uh, is in the faculty. So if we, if we look at the distribution in the faculty, we still have a 60% men and 40% women. But looking at, at the young generation situation, in the, the young researcher, let's say in the last uh, 10 years, we see that we have uh, 51 percent uh, um, uh, female and 49 women. It means that now, if we consider what, what is happening now, what we can do today, we are already in a 50 percent uh, in the research field. We are in a 50 percent presence of uh, male and female. So the faculty uh, unbalance, I say the faculty presence, uh, preval presence of men, is, is mostly historical, let's say. Of course, in the faculty, we have uh, a picture of what happened about 30 years ago. Um, so I think it's just a matter of time to, to see that the women will come also into the faculty in the higher position. And uh, um, I can say that Sapienza in this field is, is really representing a, a a strong improvement. We see that uh, our rector is actually a, a rectrix. I don't know if, if this term is, exists in English, but she's a woman, uh, Antonella Polimeni, and she, she uh, really was uh, winning with, with a large percentage. So it was recognized as a leading uh, uh, figure in our, uh, in our university. And also the vice rector to research, so a very key role in, in the, in the uh, Sapienza organization is uh, our, uh, the director of our, my department, which is Maria Sabrina Sarto. So uh, we are, um, I think in the university, we are really giving a, a good, a strong sign that uh, female are included uh, now. But still, this does not mean that in, in the specific of aerospace engineering, we are now at 50%, because there is still a let's say a segregation in, in different uh, um, disciplines. Uh, so if we look at engineering or uh, technology in general, physics, all, all the, the technological uh, and, and science uh, disciplines, uh, more or less we see 70% men and 30% women. Um, I think this is uh, maybe uh, uh, physiological, uh, um, I don't know. If we see other fields, uh, for example, education, uh, there is a, a segregation is opposite. So I think this is trivial, I don't know, but we see that in education fields, uh, we have 93% female and just 7% men. So I would like to see um, also a, a let's say a, a balance uh, in, in other fields, not only in, in aerospace engineering. Of course, we are dealing now with aerospace engineering, but if we think of education of uh, uh, even uh, a primary school or even uh, uh, when the ch children between age of three years, uh, I don't know what we call in, in Italy is a silo nido. I, I don't know what is the, <laughs> the word in English, unfortunately, uh, but really uh, before primary school, uh, uh, there is no man, uh, and also in the primary school till uh, uh, 10 years, our children don't see any men in, in the teaching uh, uh, staff, which I think is a strong imbalance, which maybe reflects also in the future, in, in the future uh, development, in the interest uh, that uh, young uh, uh, female children uh, develop in, in, in what is considered, let's say now, uh, mostly a man uh, environment like uh, technology and science. So if they could see this in the early education, uh, how technology can uh, is part of, of everyday life, uh, I think this could improve uh, um, the, the presence of females in these STEM uh, disciplines. Um, so what we are doing in our lab, uh, in, what, what we can do is, of course, uh, uh, force the inclusion of, of, uh, of our female students. Uh, and, and I think our lab uh, uh, reflects the numbers that are in, in the overall engineering. So I would say that uh, we have between 20 and 30 percent presence of, uh, of uh, female students. Maybe Paolo later will say better. Um, what is the added value of, of the presence of female, female uh, uh, students in our lab? 
it's very difficult to say because it's not i don't like to speak in general uh, to generalize uh, uh, something which is really personal but uh, in on an average i can say that the the what i what i see is that female students are really good in uh, in in achieving what what is their assignment within the, the lab uh, they are very brilliant and they're also very good at keeping time something which is uh, not common in in the male uh, uh, students male students tend to to be in delay my, maybe they have my <laughs> they have a, a, a bad, bad example in me <laughs> i don't know if this is the the the, the problem uh, but i see that uh, female students are um, uh, in, in in engineering are very well organized they keep time uh, and uh, um i don't know they um they offer a different view of, of solving difficulties they have much broader view uh, with respect to men which are mostly um, most of the times they are very um they have a very deep uh, view but of a very small sector instead the added value of having women is uh, some of them of course are very excellent also in going deep into the discipline but in general they have a very uh, open view and also they are very easily uh, established relations which in engineering is very important so if i have a, 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 a established sorry I, I Close because we it. are late okay i didn't realize uh, so uh, another added value is establishing relation with the outside world so if i have a, a to to go in a meeting and establish relations with with the um, outside world women are excellent in this so my uh, I, I insist in the message if we want to stimulate stem we don't need to wait uh, when the women are 20 years old we must go where they are children there we must put men and uh, uh, let this culture be present early. I will finish now. Sorry for sorry for being late. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio. And uh, we leave now the floor to Elena Toson that coming from the industry with another uh, experience. Elena, are you ready? Yes. Uh, thank you. Very thank, much. you. thank you, Anna Maria, very much. Uh, um, so I will go directly through through your points. Uh, so um, you are asking us which are the adding value as a woman. So uh, I refer to uh, you all what I think. Uh, so for me, women and men have both adding uh, have both adding values. Uh, so the real adding value is diversity. Is having a heterogeneous environment so with a good ratio of women, men and women, with people from different countries, with different experience and the sharing of different behaving and thinking can, can bring really uh, to creative solutions. Uh, so regarding what are the difficulties and what could be done as a way forward actions for gender equality and inclusion. Uh, so in here, I believe that one of the main challenges that I am personally living and that a, per, and that a professional of, of my generation uh, between 30 and 40 years needs to face daily is represented by the relation and the balance between the work and the family. Uh, for families that have children, uh, one of the main discussed topics is the maternity and paternity protection. So today there's different ways in which the European Union and other countries are behaving in terms of maternity, paternity and parental leave. Uh, just to give you some example, some examples. The majority of US countries has the fewest maternity leaves protections or benefits of any country with 12 weeks of unpaid family leave time after the birth of a child or after the adoption of a child. Some other countries are safeguarding mothers and fathers in the same way. And this is happening, for example, in Spain, uh, where the terms of permits uh, uh, in terms of permits, there's uh, an equal treatment for fathers and mothers, and this is guaranteeing equality during jobs interviews and the working access in general. Uh, while some other countries are safeguarding also mothers that are studying and that are doing volunteering like in Germany, and in Italy, that is my country, the working mother has five months of 100% paid maternity 
leave and six months of 30% paid, paid leave. And uh, this can also, uh, of this can also benefit uh, the father. So another rele relevant topic is the importance of breastfeeding uh, that is not always understood. And also in this case, uh, the law is different from country to country, varying from zero legal protection, like in Australia, uh, to working hours reduction without loss of pay as, there in it as here in Italy. Uh, again, in this case, uh, Spain, uh, in Spain, the father can benefit from this breastfeeding time of guaranteeing equality. And this is what I believe. So mothers and fathers equal measures could really guarantee equality at the hiring, at the hiring phase and equal treatment and no discrimination when a newborn is arriving. So it happened to me uh, that when I got pregnant uh, at the coffee machine, one of the past interviewer uh, said to me, I think that you were not interested in having babies when I interviewed you. Uh, and this confirms that uh, that was one of his selection parameters and I cannot accept this. Uh, so another topic uh, is the coming back to work phase for a woman that has to find a balance between its private, uh, between work and its private life. Uh, as of my experience, uh, I work uh, in a small medium company uh, where my job performance is related to the responsibilities that I have and not to the object and, uh, and also to the objectives uh, that I reach. So I can manage my working hours as I prefer. And as before, it's my responsibility to be proactive, to be present, and not to take advantage of this opportunity. So uh, I believe that to reach gender equality, uh, institutions, company, governments have a fundamental role, uh, but that women and men are responsible in their own. So I want to leave you with an example. When I got pregnant uh, at, the, at the third month of my pregnancy, some friends uh, of mine said to me, uh, you can now go to the doctor and stay at home from now on. Uh, you have two babies and she will let you stay at home for sure. Uh, and they say, why? I said uh, that I was feeling good, I was feeling well, and does it, it, has, it had no sense for me to stay at home. So we all have to be grateful for the governments uh, that are taking care of, of these topics. Uh, and uh, year by year, in some way, they are increasing the protections of the family working balance. But it is also extremely important that each of us uh, takes the responsibility and acts consequently. So I finished. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, to share your experience, Elena. And uh, I leave uh, the floor now to the younger generation with uh, Federica Angeletti. Federica? Okay. Thank you very much. Can you? Can you okay. There is uh, some noise, Federica. Okay. Is it any better now? Uh, perhaps it's at the microphone. Okay, so now is it better? Or... Okay, perhaps it's better if you eliminate the microphone. Better without the microphone? Yes. So in this way, it's better in this way? Yes, go on. Yes? Yes. Okay. So sorry for this uh, for this inconvenience. Uh, thank you very much for um, for having invited me today to discuss uh, in this virtual panel, and thank you for asking my experience as uh, as a young researcher. Uh, so uh, as uh, Anna Maria already said, I am currently um, a researcher at university and uh, I'm freshly graduated from a PhD course. Uh, so uh, I most experience in performing uh, research uh, in groups, in university groups, especially in, with students. And uh, I've also had the opportunity to, to be a student in the laboratory of Professor uh, Santoni. 
so uh, I can uh, highly confirm that uh, it is, uh, uh, of course, one of the best environments I've been uh, into in my university career. Um, so uh, yes, uh, I guess that uh, the added value of um, being a woman or having a woman in a, in a group that I've noticed is that uh, in this way we can have different backgrounds and different perspectives and different points of views. So this is uh, a, an incredible added value because uh, if we approach uh, a problem and we have a set of different skills, we can find a solution in a more effective and also fast way. And I'd say also in a more creative way. So uh, this is for sure one uh, when I uh, use added value. Of course, it is also personal, uh, um, uh, it works also at a personal level. Every person is uh, different from each other. Uh, also, uh, I've seen that um, by having different uh, people with uh, different um, stories, with different expertise, and also having uh, women, we can have uh, a diversified scenario. Uh, so the uh, diversity in that case can also uh, help improve the, the atmosphere so that everyone can feel more uh, included, more confident in expressing uh, uh, his or her own ideas or point of views. So all the group can uh, benefit uh, by this situation. Uh, so concerning the difficulties, uh, I've seen, uh, uh, I've not seen major difficulties related to, to my gender during my university career, but I also think that uh, now the new generations are really more sensitive to the gender equity or equality issues. So there is um, more focus on the topic right now. And of course, the situation has, uh, has improved a lot with respect to, to last year's in this sense. Uh, of course, uh, there are still stereotypes, uh, biases, uh, especially concerning women in the, in the STEM field. Uh, so um, I could say I've experienced some stereotypes, but mostly outside the university. Uh, so I can say that um, in, according to my experience, university is uh, uh, also in, in, the, in this moment, uh, uh, is a good, uh, it's a good environment uh, also for women in STEM. So I, uh, I would highly encourage women to not feel uh, um, to not have fear of being excluded too much uh, to to have the, the courage to, to push their dreams, their passions. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are still difficulties and we have to work on that. Um, for instance, uh, in, in the academic field concerning the, the research, uh, as uh, also uh, Professor Santoni mentioned before, we have a, fen a phenomenon case called um, leaking the pipeline. That means that, uh, uh, yes, of course, we are, um, at the moment, including all different faculties. So we have uh, a high number of female students, uh, but uh, if we go higher on the university levels, so we have fewer and fewer women. Uh, also, if we consider only the STEM faculties, uh, uh, in that case, we are also fewer female students with respect to men. Uh, and this, um, this is not improving uh, at the higher uh, level, so uh, academic uh, uh, career ladder, of course. And also another difficulty that I, I noticed that sometimes uh, um, being uh, a woman in a group of uh, mostly men, uh, it poses some limitation to access some networks, some uh, key uh, contacts that could be very useful also for professional personal development. Uh, so the, I see that uh, there is also the need to, to work on, to better work on inclusion and treatment uh, in uh, every working group. Uh, so as a way forward, uh, um, I'd say that uh, I would uh, continue to, to raise awareness on the, the situation of gender stereotypes and biases, uh, not only in the academic uh, environment, uh, but also in the professional one. Uh, we have to be aware that uh, some problems still, uh, still exist. And uh, also agree that uh, the, there is a need to go at the root of the problem. So at uh, early education uh, to try also to, um, to talk to children, to, to young kids, to to the uh, newer generation to, um, to explain that uh, they have to 
uh, follow what they want to do, uh, irrespectively of their gender or background, uh, etc. So indeed, the edu good education is, uh, is a crucial factor for gender equity and equality also in the, in the years to, to come. And uh, lastly, also I um, suggest to um, increase the, the visibility of the role models, especially uh, uh, female women role models. Uh, and that is something that we are also doing as the uh, Roma local group of women in aerospace Europe. Uh, we um, are trying to highlight also the, the success, the achievements of women, especially in the STEM sector, um, because this is a, a really way also to, to not only encourage, but also to prove that uh, this is a possible career, this is a possible path. And uh, I would like just to, to conclude my, my speech today with a, uh, a quote from, from Sally Wright that said that uh, uh, you can't be what uh, you can see. So it is uh, very important to provide examples, to provide models to be followed, especially at, uh, also when you are a child, a child or where you are a school at uh, also at high school level and, and so on. So thank you again for, for having invited me. And, uh, many. Many thanks, uh, Federica. And uh, now we leave uh, the floor to the other gender of the same generation, that is uh, Paolo Marzioli. Paolo, the floor Thank is you. yours. Thank you, Anna Maria. Uh, first of all, I'm, uh, I want to thank everyone of you for involving me in this uh, initiative, in this um, panel. And uh, yeah, my point of view is, uh, opposite but the same actually of what you what you all think and uh, i'm learning a lot in uh, witnessing uh, usually students at the lab that uh, uh, give birth to their probably first uh, team in uh, in an experiment or in a student uh, project or something like that so uh, i i'm always very pleased to be at the lab with extremely young students also in the sense of uh, their uh, team experience but uh, as uh, some uh, superhero said, from great powers uh, comes a great responsibility. So uh, having their first experience uh, marks uh, in uh, some kind of way, in uh, some kind of imprinting way their life. And uh, what I would uh, uh, love to see in the future is uh, that, for example, uh, the, the number of women, especially in this era where uh, especially women in STEM are not that many uh, still, when you give birth to the team, the team composition has to be as uh, in uh, other sectors and in uh, other phases of their career, for example, 30% or 40% uh, women. These uh, can uh, give us, uh, for example, a, uh, let's say, a, a way, uh, because for sure we need to start from, as Professor Santoni was saying, from the percentage of female students that we have uh, at the lab. And uh, we, we need to go forward because uh, coming to the advantages that I see when I see many, many girls in the teams, uh, uh, I see, for example, not only that uh, male students are always uh, late, and I hope not to have been one of the ones that were late when I was a student, <laughs> uh, but I always see that uh, usually the, the, um, the team can stay together in a, in a, in a real co uh, cohesive way, in a, some kind of extent, and usually when, uh, when there is uh, some criticality, it's always the women that uh, pave the way to, to solve it in some, in, in some other kinds of way because they, they give a different perspective. And uh, if not, if uh, maybe uh, the, the subsystem that they are taking care of is managed by a man, usually there's uh, that kind of spirit which is brought 99% uh, of the time by the, by the female students of the group, while uh, the reaction of, of the male students is some kind of different uh, somehow. And uh, so, yes, the, the wish I have is that uh, it's like in a very, let's say, male parallel. When, when I go and play tennis with my friends or I play soccer with my friends, uh, you need to be in 10 for the soccer and in four for the tennis doubles to go out. Uh, my wish is that uh, when uh, we, we give uh, shape to the new teams, uh, you need to be 30 or 40% women to go out. Otherwise, it's an go. And uh, there should be a rule, something like that, or at least a strong recommendation. Then we can discuss, but the rule is that. 
And uh, I believe that if we do this in their first team experience, uh, when uh, we will uh, release them from the university and let them spread out in all the companies, uh, this kind of spirit can be uh, brought forward in uh, uh, maybe at least just with the spirit, but at least uh, we, need me- we need women uh, and we need the women in a decent percentage in all the teams that, uh, that we have. And uh, that's my wish for the future. I don't know if I will arrive to... Uh, let's say, not to say this anymore to my students, uh, because maybe we will arrive to a future in, uh, in some years where we, where we don't have to say this anymore, because it's normal that we have uh, this representation, this uh, all gender representation in all the teams. Uh, but I wish to, to, to give my drop in the ocean uh, for, for this process and uh, to keep on witnessing uh, young students becoming great team members and uh, great team companions in the future. Thank you very much, Paolo, and uh, very nice uh, the aim of team speaking that is very important. I will uh, now I will introduce uh, Eva Tai, that uh, is uh, a geologist, and we will she will share uh, uh, with us his uh, experience in terms of STEM, uh, women in STEM. Eva, thank you. Are Anna you Marina? ready? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, thank you. Anna yes, Maria. perfect. Uh, I would like to add, yes, you kindly introduced me. So I am from Hungary. Uh, I, um, I, have a, I am a professor and I have 40 years of experience in teaching at University of Mishkots as a geologist. And uh, you could see that I represent the NG project. What is this NG project? Uh, uh, NG, come, uh, it's an acronym. It comes from the project title, which is encouraging girls to study geosciences and engineering. So actually, we represent uh, quite a narrow segment of STEM because we focus on uh, uh, geosciences and geoengineering but of course we we studied uh, the best practices in teaching stem thorough, uh, thoroughly and uh, even uh, we prepared a report on that if you are interested from the project website it's available again best practices in teaching STEM, but uh, just, a, just a few more words about the project because it, it might be interesting that we have a very good geographical coverage in Europe. This is an EU funded project and we have 25 partners, project partners from 20 European countries. So all the NG actions are implemented in these uh, 20 countries. And the, as the title says, the main aim of the project is to raise the interest of these young girls uh, for these geosciences and engineering disciplines. How can we reach that? Uh, we, of course, we, we do a baseline. It's a running project, three years long. First, we do a baseline assessment then comes the so-called NG actions, and uh, then we have an impact assessment. And the, I, I can say that the most important part is the NG actions, because this is uh, uh, with what we try to engage these young girls, and of course, not only young girls, because, because boys can all also enter the programs. And we organize lots of lots of kinds of events in these 20 countries, like the side events of Girls' Day, University Open Day, um, Researchers' Night. We organize field trips, after school science, science club activities, photo contests, video contests. Um, we prepared 10 videos from NG role models. We organized a lot of webinars 
and uh, we issued so-called NG magazine with interesting articles. And we also organized a methodology course for science teachers uh, from the aspects of gender and from the aspects of how to teach geosciences in an attractive way. So shortly, this is what we are doing in, in NG. How, how it relates to this discussion, uh, because Anna Maria asked uh, what the added value is if women participate. I highly agree with Elena's opinion. Not only female, but male is also important, the male participation, because there are several studies which prove that diverse teams are much more innovative and much more effective than, than the not diverse group. So, and, and, and this, uh, this is especially true for gender diversity. And uh, the second point by Anna Maria was, the, what are the difficulties in reaching our goals? I, I think that uh, uh, the first difficulty is, and most important difficulty probably, is that the traditional thinking in the societies still exist. The traditional thinking that they are traditionally mainly professions and women professions. So this is what we, we have to clarify uh, and, and we have to, to do, uh, to make steps in this field. And finally, you, uh, you, you asked uh, Anna Maria, what kind of steps can be, can be done? Uh, the, the most important thing is to raise the interest. If, if, we, if our aim is to make this gender balance and gender equity, so we have to, we have to reach the girls. And uh, it was uh, when, we, when we studied these best practices in STEM teaching, our conclusion was that, that the interest is uh, usually triggered by an external factor. I mean, an external person or an experience or something like that. But if this interest is not constantly stimulated and the actions are not repeated, this interest will decrease. So uh, this, is, this is the most important thing, to keep trying uh, trying to to keep the interest of these young girls for these disciplines thank you very much Eva. and uh, all uh, what we said in this uh, first round is in line with uh, the campaign that we are uh, addressing uh, uh, for all our members and not only members and uh, I have um, now two further questions, and I don't know if you want to, to participate with uh, the answer. The first one is, uh, uh, what action could we take to reduce the gender gap? Because uh, I strongly believe in diversity and inclusion, but we have to take into account the reality, and we don't have uh, the same uh, a balance and which could be the role of a politics who wanted to answer Anna Maria I can uh, just uh, okay perfect. well I, I was thinking uh, that uh, for your first questions uh, very shortly I think we should have we should get some advantages of what happened uh, with the pandemic uh, period because uh, that's uh, at least uh, 
I myself uh, that uh, you know I, I was experienced uh, say a double life uh, so to be at home and do the international activities and networking and, and work and at the same time uh, be at home with the family uh, for what have been said by by uh, Elena and the others uh, uh, still women have to face uh, this double life and uh, the possibility to use uh, these technologies that are of course uh, now uh, they were being available before but uh, they will be experienced during this uh, one year and a half uh, I think give us a very very good example and I think we have, we have to pursue it, that we have to insist that uh, this could be used to, to improve the situation uh, uh, and of course all the other things have to be said but I think this is an important uh, aspect and uh, some companies I, I understand like uh, my, my husband works for the team you know, the telephone uh, the Italian uh, telephone company they uh, already changed their contracts and they will work only three days a week that's not happening in the in the public sectors where I, I work uh, and like the, the research uh, institution so I think that could be an help for uh, equalize the gender uh, so let's think to that. That's uh, and of course uh, that's implied that the politicians have to take decisions on that. So so that's that's my short uh, say contribution. Uh, yes, thank you. I would also uh, add something uh, to what Maria said uh, that focusing on the European Union regarding this question, I would say that uh, uh, the laws could could help on this. Uh, uh, for, for me, in fact, the, the Spain example is a good one for equality also in terms of presence. And this can encourage interviewers not to discriminate women during the hiring process, for example. And, and today there's not an, uh, a common uh, European Union rule, uh, but a pregnant woman in Italy has the same needs of another woman in the Netherlands or in another country. So, we should find um, a way to see to set some some common laws, uh, maybe starting uh, in this case from the Spanish one and for other uh, topics uh, on, on other national ones, but but setting some some general rules. If I can add uh, something to what was said, which uh, of course I agree fully, is when I when I was a father and my my children were very small. Uh, I, I realized that for the Italian system, school system, you start at six years. What is before is up to you. Only private, uh, there are basically only private uh, uh, institutions and the, the, the public institution in that age are very few and, and reserved to really uh, very, very particular bad situation in the family, like uh, I don't know, uh, which I don't want to mention now, but for, for the regular, let's say, uh, family, uh, you need to face yourself uh, the, the support uh, for either a babysitter, which, which I, I didn't like, but uh, if you want to bring your children to school in a very young age, there is no uh, uh, national system in Italy that takes care of, the, of these and uh, of course, in Europe, it's even worse with, with different uh, situations in different countries. Uh, so I think the, the, the service, uh, when we have very small children, of course, even also when they are, with, when they are uh, um, uh, growing up. But for us, uh, it was very difficult to find this service uh, at the beginning, so when the children were small. And... Um, it, Money is not only the, the problem, uh, so it's also the institution, because it's sometimes in this private uh, uh, institution, they are very, they are not very professional, I can say, and it, we had our time finding the right school for our children, uh, because there is not the culture for this, there is not institution, uh, uh, the institutions are not taking care of this, so maybe a, a, a national uh, um, law in this sense uh, uh, could help. Thank you very much, Fabio. And uh, I will uh, submit another question for the other panelists that want to contribute. Uh, Ana Maria? Did... Livio. Yes? Can I, can I add just a, 
a few words because uh, I, for answering I like your, your, your first question, uh, for reducing the gap, I would suggest a thing. Don't permit more when there is a working meeting and they arrive the evening and the women needs to go home for any reasons. And the male can say, anyway, we can continue, no problem. And the day after, when women come back, oh, the decision, we are already taken, no problem. That is the mode to enlarge the gap. So please don't permit more. The, the meeting is closed, and the day after, we can continue all together. I'm old, but I quite to the retirement, but that it was the, the mode I worked for a lot of uh, years. Good, Livio, I agree. Yeah. Very well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, many thanks, uh, Livio. And uh, the other question is, uh, what could be done to encourage uh, the cultural change, uh, including uh, what said by Livio, uh, in order um, to uh, go towards uh, a modern society with uh, two complementary uh, models. Because uh, what I mentioned by Livio is a typical male model. Who wanted to uh, answer? Well, uh, as I said before, I insist on this, but I think uh, um, we must start with the children, very small children. If you start to see that uh, your teachers are only women till you are 10 or maybe uh, even, even uh, uh, 13 years old. Uh, um, you can get the, 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 the male view, let's say what we, we in general, of course, this is just a generalization, but that, that side of the view uh, comes very late. If you could uh, introduce this early, like with reserved quotes for a, a male teacher in the, in the primary school, I don't know what kind of, of things we can <laughs> introduce. Uh, I think that could, uh, in a long range, start to, to improve the situation. Any other intervention that we are at the end of our panel? Uh, just very shortly, if I can add something, we have to touch the problem of payment. So it's a very important principle, uh, equal, equal pay, equal job. So because still exist in Europe, in general, that as an average, the women's salary in the same positions are 20% lower than, than the men's salary. So this is also something uh, which the politicians should deal with. Even it could be a part of legislation or, or companies can benefit somehow if they pay equal salaries to, to male and women. For example, tax. Thank you, Eva. An important issue that is uh, uh, debated also at the European level because it's a general situation, not only in Italy, but in all of the country. Uh, if we don't have any other uh, contribution, uh, I will close uh, the session. And uh, before greetings, I ask uh, to all of the panelists, please uh, open uh, your uh, video in order uh, to have uh, a picture <laughs> of our uh, virtual uh, table, uh, round table. Only the panelists or all? At the moment, only the panelists. Okay. Later on, all of the people. <laughs> okay. Federica? Okay. Okay, we are ready.
Did you be ready? Yes. Okay. 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 This is with the, only the panelists and with all people. <laughs> all attendees, if you want to open your video. We wait. We are in two pages now, but in the second page there is no people. So in the first page it's okay. Okay, okay, okay. Other is uh, sleeping or uh, eating or I don't know what. Okay. Okay, somebody is coming. Oh, this is nice. Sandrine de Pien, are you here? Okay. Okay, okay, Domiziana Messina. Okay, my sister is on our our support okay i only should like to thank you eva because we work together in the ng project so i'm very happy that uh, you come here in this uh, session and see you later in uh, in uh, in the project thank bye you. bye 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 Thank you to all, and it has been a pleasure uh, to have uh, all of you as our guests in uh, this uh, session, and we hope to reply also in the future and to meet you within uh, the women in your space. Yes, thank, of you, course. Maria, thank you, Thank you. 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 Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye